I'm suffering from depression and I'm dealing with a fucking migraine. So I really don't want to be here right now. But I honor my commitment, so let's do this. Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Nile, and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where twice a week, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I will talk about everything that happened recently in the association and everything I'm looking forward to in the coming week. We start off Friday night while the Mystics continue to struggle and the Sparks, they continue to roll. They, they have an easy 30 point victory. Then you had the Dream who had five players in double figures. Not to be outdone though, the Fever, they had seven players in double figures. They managed to grab a win. And then you finish off the night with one of the su most surprising games that I've seen all season. You have the Mercury at the Storm. And, you know, the Mercury, they had four starters in double figures, led by Tarasi, who had 23. The Storm, they also had four starters in double figures. Brianna Stewart had her first career double-double. Jewel Lloyd had a career-high 30 points. And she hit the game-winning bucket with two, three seconds to go to give Seattle a one-point win. If you had told me at the beginning of the season that Seattle would get their first win before uh, Phoenix did, I would have called you a damn fool. Are a stupid liar, especially since they play each other so early in the season. Like, I really did not expect it to end like this. Then on Saturday, you had a battle between two undefeated teams. Tina Charles, of course, the double double machine that she is, she came to play. Uh, Sparks, however, on the other side, they definitely showed up as well. Candace Parker and Neka Adumake, they combined for 39 points and 27 rebounds. Two guesses as to who won that game. Then you have Connecticut, they got four players in double-doubles. Alyssa Thomas leads the way with 18 points. Kelsey Bone adds another double-double to her resume. Then again, you got the Mystics, Taylor Hill, Bria Hartley, they continue their scoring rampage. They combine for 40 points. The Mystics are able to force it into overtime where they break away for their first win of the season. And then that night is capped off by the new state rivalry. You have the two Texas teams, San Antonio versus Dallas. Odyssey Sims continues to carry a big load for her team. She put on 23 points, not to be outdone. McBride, she came in and just tossed in 29 of her own. But Dallas was still able to come away with the win in that one. Then on Sunday, you have two games that were both fairly exciting. You've got the Sky. They go in without their star point guard. Vandersloot sat out with an ankle injury. The Dream, they took advantage. They played a hard game. They took the final lead with about two minutes left in the third quarter, and they never gave it up after that. And then, of course, you finish off the week with the battle between the UConn greats, Stewie, versus Maya Moore and Stewie. She continues to impress in her rookie campaign. She had a second straight game with the double-double. You know, the Storm had four players in double-double figures, led by 20 points from Alicia Clark. Not to be outdone, though, of course, the Lynx, the well-oiled machine that they were, they had every single starter in double figures. Maya Moore won rebound short of a double-double, and while the score was much closer than I would have figured, still, very, still Minnesota's win. And after all that action, here are our current standings. And if you'll notice from that list, the two undefeated teams that are left in the league right now, both from the Western Conference, and I'm really looking forward to seeing their first matchup against each other. Will they both be able to remain undefeated until they meet each other? It's hard to say. I would like it if they did though. I think it would make a much better, greater storyline. And also the only two winless teams in the league, both from the Western Conference. And on both sides of this ball, the Sparks and the Lynx, not at all shocked at their 3-0. They're both two really great teams that I have a lot of high expectations for. And the Stars, not at all surprised to see them 0-3. In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if they only had three wins at the end of the season. I don't really expect too much from this roster this year. In the future, there's some potential for growth, but they still they need they still got a lot of improvements to make before they can compete with all the best in the league. Speaking of the best in the league, if you had told me that the, if you had told me at the beginning of the year that the Mercury would start 0-3, I would have chopped off your leg and called you a damn liar. I mean, the Mercury are an incredibly talented team. And we know that with the roster they have, they are more than capable of winning plenty of games. 
Somehow though, it's just not happening for them. But in all honesty, the thing that scares me the most is that I'm, I'm nervous about seeing the power rankings right now because I still feel like they're good for the Mercury are gonna be ranked too damn high in those power rankings. The media is just way too nice to the Mercury, okay? If they're in the top five, I'm gonna throw something. You shouldn't be able to start 0-3 and, and be sitting at the bottom of the league and still be considered one of the five best teams in the league. I better see them drop in those power rankings, I'm not kidding. And the Dallas Wings, they've gotten off to a great start. Did I necessarily expect 3-1? Meh, maybe. It was iffy, they definitely got a tough schedule. But I did think, yeah, of course, there are definitely games you expect them to win. And then when you look at the fact that they're missing two key players, Gloria Johnson, she hasn't played yet because of her suspension, so she, they're going to have a few more days before she comes back and she makes them a better team when she's there. And then, of course, Skylar Diggins has yet to play as she's rehabbing for her injury. And I'm not sure when exactly she does come back, but when she does step on the floor, I doubt that she's immediately going to be 100%. But, you know, that's the scariest part because, you know, think about it, that when they come back, from the Olympic break, if they get off to a great start now without Skylar Diggins, who I still consider to easily be the best player on that team, imagine how much better they will get down the stretch once she comes on at full force. Dallas is a very dangerous team right now, and if they can keep racking up these wins early, they set themselves up in a great position to finish even stronger than they started. The Storm, they're competing. I mean, so far they're competing just about every night. They're definitely playing much better than I thought they would. There's still time for some of these young players to mature and some of the chemistry to continue improving, but like, I honestly, I think they have a better shot at the playoffs than what I gave them at the beginning of the year. They're playing very well right now. If they can keep it up and consistently challenge for some of the teams, I think they'll be in the race. I still expect them to just barely miss out on the playoffs though. But I think they're gonna do better than I've expected them to, maybe. And with the Mystics, definitely disappointed with how they started the season, especially with the production from the bigs. You know, Misa Man, she's so-so right now. She looks about as good as she was last year. Dawson seems to just disappear at times. I expected both of them to be carrying this team. You know, I expected to see that maturation, another leap forward in this year. But right now, it's the guard play we are definitely seeing the biggest impact. Hartley, she's doing a great job for them, and especially Taylor Hill. She's looking like, you know, if they can manage to get into the playoffs, which is definitely in doubt right now. But if they can manage to get there, I think she's someone that could be considered for an MVP candidate. I think there's only been one game this season where she didn't score 20 points. I mean, uh, right now, from what I've seen, she looks like easily the focal point of this group. Those are just my opinions, and y'all don't give a fuck what I think. Y'all just want to know what games are being played this week. Fine! You get your wish. We're moving on to the next segment. These are the games that are being played in the next three days. And as always, I will tell you which ones are being broadcast nationally so that everyone in the U.S. can see. And for the rest, you know, you can always check your local listings or watch every single game on WNBA League Pass. And do not forget that all the times that I announce are Eastern Standard Time, so don't forget to adjust for your time zone. I cannot be held responsible for you ignoring the time zones. Time zones are important, people. So on Tuesday, we've got two games. First, you've got the Dream at the Liberty. This is an early game. It's at 11 a.m. Some of you West Coast is going to be eating your Wheaties while you're watching this. Actually, I wonder, what time is it in Australia when it's 11 a.m. here? I don't know if you're fans of the Dream or the Liberty, but I know there are a lot of Australian viewers of the WNBA. Are you guys eating a steak dinner while we're eating our breakfast? I'm just curious. I guess the time difference is at least 10 hours. Am I wrong? I do know that it's a different hemisphere, so the seasons are flipped. It's winter for y'all right now. I don't necessarily understand your time zones yet. I don't actually plan on ever visiting the Outback. It seems dangerous down there. There are so many different things that can kill you. And I'm not just talking about the animals, I'm talking about the people too. You Australians are scary. You're sexy, but you're scary. Random tangent aside, we get back to the real news. We have the second game on Tuesday. You've got the Sparks 
at the sky this game at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time broadcast on ESPN2 and I know you're all going to watch that you've got two of the best players in the league being showcased here with Candace Parker and Elena Deladon that alone is worth it then we move on to Wednesday where you've got the Lynx at the Mercury which these teams are just going at polar opposites right now you've got the Lynx number one in the league with an undefeated record and the Mercury Number 12 in the league with a winless record. Who the hell saw that coming? And this game could either push them further apart or it could be the game where the Mercury finally stand up and say, fuck this, this is not who we are, and they make a strong statement win here. Like, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see that happen. Like, at this point in time, it's still early in the season. I'm, I'm trying not to have too many expectations. There's not a lot that would shock me. But the Mercury winning this game would shock me less than them losing this game. Then on Thursday, the last two games of the week, you've got the Sparks at the Sun at 7 p.m. Sparks, this is going to be their fourth game in a row on the road. You know, four away games, that's a lot of travel, especially since it's like on the road, one night off, then another road game, one night off, another one again. And last but not least, you've got the Mystics at the Storm, 10 p.m. Now, you, of course, you know, Stewie getting to face off against some of her former teammates. That might be fun to look at, maybe. Who knows? Either way, you're going to watch it because you love this game and you are passionate about these teams. Also, I know I mentioned them earlier, but I want to finish this off with a quick shout out to Bria Hartley and Taylor Hill. You know, both of them, they've had some struggles earlier in their seasons. Taylor taking some time off to have a baby, Bria with the injury that she had to fight back from last year. And now both of them, they're really having breakout season this year, really coming into their own. And they're showing that there is definitely a bright future ahead for the Mystics. And I really enjoy watching both of them play so far this year. They are doing an amazing job. And I think for me personally, I would like it if she can keep playing at this pace and they can keep the Mystics can put a bunch of wins together. I would like to see Taylor Hill in that MVP conversation. Uh, like I said, if she can keep up this production throughout the entire season. But even even if she can't, I think they've all, both of them, Hill and Hartley, are already in the conversation for most improved. <laughs> Whatever, that's the end of the show. New episode on Friday, so I'll see you then. And until then, this has been The Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Mel. Have a great week. I hope you're enjoying the season so far. What's the most shocking thing that you've seen? Because for me, I still can't get over the whole, like, 0-3 Mercury. I would have thought worst case scenario 2-1 because of a loss to the Lynx. I would never have guessed 3-0-3. Oh